This is Chris Gardner of the Houston Round Ball Review. Joining me is Alvin Franklin. I think we've spoken three. I think this will be the third time we talked. Third time. Yes, sir. How you doing, sir? Man, I'm doing well, man. This is, um, you know, uh, we run into these ebbs and flows of, 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 of the different types, different seasons, right? You start with the fall season with, you know, your football, volleyball, soccer, uh, and it goes into kind of the winter, men's basketball, women's basketball, and all the other sports, and then spring sports. But, you know, I tell the people from a fundraiser standpoint, Cougar Pride, this is our season, right? Okay. Renewal, renewals are out right now for Cougar Pride renewals. You got football season ticket renewals out. We'll, we'll go out with men's basketball renewals here, um, here in the next four weeks, uh, four to six weeks. And then, you know, still some special projects, initiatives, um, and then also right now the, the the million dollar topic of college athletics NIL. So it, it this is this is our season right now. So uh this is where we're we're out and about probably more times than ever right now. So exciting. And for those who have not seen our first two conversations, let them know your official title with Houston Cougars Athletics. Uh so official title is, is really long long and wordy, but uh senior associate athletic director and executive director of development here with uh Houston Athletics. And what are some of those details that you do with that long title? Uh so really um the Cliff Notes version is I oversee our fundraising efforts here uh for Houston Athletics. So um, you know, we, we do a plethora of things from sport specific giving to uh annual fund fundraising premium seating uh and then we have our major gifts um where you know those commitments of twenty five thousand dollars or more to uh, it could be a capital project it could be anything specific in the athletic department any of our special initiatives so a uh, lot going on uh <laughs> on a daily basis in this role but i love it wouldn't want to do anything else and i think you've been here eight months eight months yep today today is eight months Oh, wow. Okay. So well, yeah. congratulations on that. And how have these eight months been for you? Uh, they've been very enlightening. Um, you know, I've learned a lot about um, the university, learned a lot about, uh, our, you know, the history of um, our athletics department, uh, donor base and fan base, you know, what they're passionate about, what they're looking for. Um, I've definitely learned a lot from our coaches and, and some of the things that they need to be successful uh, in their roles. Um, and then, you know, what's the vision, you know, you know, as, as we have now jumped into the big 12, you know, a lot of people say, okay, we're in the big 12. Now we've checked that box. Now what? Mm -hmm. Right. So now, you know, as we, you know, continue to grow as a department and cement ourselves as a, as a consistent competitor in this league, what does that look like? Uh, so definitely learned a lot in eight months. And one of the main reasons I wanted to talk to you was, I guess, the, Oh, what, two weeks ago or so. Mm -hmm. Houston Athletics announced the uh, Cougs on the Road Summer Tour. Yes. Just provide some more details about that. And if you want me to, I can pull up the slide, provide more context, but you got it. Oh, yeah. So Cougs on the Road. So uh, we have partnered, Houston Athletics has partnered with uh, the alumni, Houston, University of Houston Alumni Association, better known as UHAA. Um, and, they, and, you know, I'm, I'm really big. And I think Chris Pesman will probably echo those sentiments about, you know, not, not reinventing the wheel. You know, our, our UHA uh, group does a really good job throughout the year with different events around our some of our sporting events. And there's a, it's called Cougs on the Road. So we already have that brand. It's already out there. People know what it is. Uh, so this is just uh, this is an extension of that. Uh, well, we we are trying to get more visibility and more engagement and build awareness about what's going on with Houston Athletics. But we ask people all year long to come to us. Come to us, come to us, come to us. So this is a way for us to get out about and go and, and get out and go to them. Uh, so we'll make four official stops uh, with a surprise fifth stop to be named at a later date. Uh, but uh, we'll have four stops here. We'll, we'll go to Dallas, the Dallas Fort Worth area next week uh, at the Veris, Veris Space Copal uh, location. Uh, so that's May 6th. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have uh, the, at the uh, Landry's location in, in the Woodlands on May 8th. Um, we'll be at um, we'll be in San Antonio on June 18th and then at Lewis Jewelers Webster Clear Lake location on June 19th. Um, so really, what can you expect on the on this tour? 
Um, you'll hear from our vice president of athletics, Chris Pesman, head men's basketball coach, Kelvin Sampson, and our head football coach, Willie Fritz. Um, so, you know, it's kind of going to be more of a, if you kind of put yourself in the mindset of a fireside chat, uh, there'll be opportunities for meet and greet and also opportunities to you know, autographs and photo ops with, with our head coaches and some, uh, uh, some special guests that we'll bring along on this tour. Um, but it's really the, the highlight is going to be the fireside chat where, um, you know, you'll be able to hear really what's going on, what are the priorities, uh, what's the vision. You know, I use the word vision a lot. People want to know where we're going and what's, mm-hmm. what's going on. Um, you know, if you can't find everything on the website, right? So, right. you know, people are, you know, uh, you know, message boards and social media, people are always searching for information. Well, now you can hear from the source. Um, and so it's an opportunity to think about Coach Fritz and, and Coach Sampson, you know, two of the best at what they do in, this, in the country. Uh, definitely, you know, everybody's seen the success that Coach Sampson's had and and the excitement that he has brought to this university and how it is, you know, the, the expectations have risen because of the standard that he's that he set uh, for his program. And Coach Fritz has come right behind him with the same energy, same passion. And I think people are going to be really excited about what Coach Fritz is going to bring uh, to our department. Uh, so we're excited to get out on the road and, 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 and get these coaches in front of in front of people. You touched on it toward the beginning mm-hmm. in NIL. Yes. It's important. The coaches know what's important. Look, look, look what I'm wearing today. The Lincoln Cougs. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But how I, I and I, I really feel bad about this, but I can't remember the Arizona State baseball coaches name but he had i guess talked media sunday and there's a clip on social media about the importance how important it is reality how important nil is for asu baseball and of course arizona state is joining the big 12 july 1st mm-hmm. but he's trying to get their supporters their alums to realize we need to increase our nil support it's just the reality of the situation mm-hmm. Have you heard that something similar message from the Houston coaches? Yes. Yes. It's, it's the reality of where we are. And, you know, it's part of, you know, it's a part of this transition, you know, like, you know, um, where we were. Um, it, and honestly, you know, it is just heightened uh, for, for basketball. But Coach Sampson's program has already been there. Right. Like mm-hmm. and we 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 got to we got to do our part to make sure that coach and his staff, has you have the resources they need to recruit at a high level uh, and remain elite. But, you know, Coach Samson has been recruiting against the top programs for the last, you know, seven, eight years. You know, that's that's been that's been a thing. Right. Um, you know, uh, when you look at the conference in our league, um, you know, now we're in a league where, you know, these some of these schools, you know, NIL became a thing July 1, 2021 was when it became official that, you know, student athletes could earn, you know, could earn uh, money for their name, image, and likeness. Let me compensate for name, image, and likeness. And, you know, at the time, you know, what, what, what was that, what did that look like in American when you talk about football, mm-hmm. right? Um, you know, that, that really, there really wasn't a sense of urgency in the American football wise, you know, to, to be at the top tier, one of the top tier NIL schools. And now, that the reality is at, at this level in the Big 12, uh, we to, to in order to compete and bring in some of the top athletes and retain the top athletes is a necessity for this department. You know, it's one of it's it's, it's you know it's the number one priority right now. And I founded uh, ASU's baseball coach Willie Bloomquist. Quist. Mm-hmm. Willie Bloomquist. He said how important NIL is and some of the quote if I can get it here. We need some funds to be able to get the players we need if we want to continue building this program the way we want. Mm -hmm. It's not just the standard recruiting that it used to be where you try to go out and get the young players and get them here and hold them and develop them after two or three years. It's not that landscape, whether you wish it is or not, end quote. Mm -hmm. That's reality. Yeah, that's reality. So how, in your role, what do you say to Houston's supporters who have given, contributed over the years and say, well, NIL is, is the, you know, lay of the land now and, and we need more from you. 
Yeah, I mean, we have to, you know, in, in my role, you know, it's on me to 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 lay it out, lay out our priorities uh, for the department. And the way I look at it is, everybody doesn't believe in it. It just that's just the reality of where, where we are, uh, and that's human nature. Every, every mm-hmm. donor or supporter doesn't believe in nil, right? But the reality is, we we need it to be successful. And so, you know, I really believe like, you know, th- we're in an era of college athletics where as a fundraiser, you can no longer just ask people for money. You have to say, all right, what are our needs as a department? What are your interests as a donor? And let's bring that together. Right. And so whether that's what are our needs, right? Our needs are NIL. We're trying to build buildings. We have uh, operating budget, uh, operating uh, budget deficit, uh, you know, whether we need uh, funds for mental health initiatives, for nutrition, the needs are, are, are long, right? Mm-hmm. But we need to match the water. So every donor is different. Some people may say, hey, I really, I'm passionate about women's sports. Okay, here are the needs for those sports. Someone may say, I'm, I'm passionate about, you know, I really want to see um, our soccer program play in a better facility. Okay, well, this is this is how, what that looks like. Uh, but there are a, a list of people that just, hey, I just want to do whatever it takes to win. Okay. okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So the number one priority there is, is NIL, right? So it's our job to paint that picture and make it clear for them um, so they can direct their funds and and and, and get their businesses involved um, in a way to make sure that they can connect, be connected to our kids for those marketing opportunities and those in that initiative. And as a media member, but also as someone who is a proud UH alum, I'm not sure how many of the Houston alums are there to just want to win, you know, and say, hey, I want all my money to go to NIL. You come from a, what, Mississippi State, right? Yes. In a comparison, now I'm not trying to, I'm not throwing stones at my fellow Mm -hmm. alums, but in terms of Mississippi State supporters and just, I just want to win. I just want my program, my, my team, my school to win. What I'm going to do whatever it takes. Would you say there's more of those at Mississippi State than there are at Houston that you've seen so far? Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough question because of, um, I was at Mississippi State for two years, okay. even though I grew up in that state. Uh, I think the difference is the awareness piece, right? Uh, for so long, we have been at the top of our league, former leagues financially. And now that's not the case. Okay. Right. So Mississippi State, on one hand, they've been toward the bottom of the SEC for the last hundred years financially. Mm-hmm. You know, it's been them, Vanderbilt, Ole Miss traditionally have been the three schools near the bottom financially. So that fan base has grown up. um you know, someone that's 50 years old or 60 years old, their whole life, that school has been the underdog in their league. Right. And then you got, you know, you're right down the road from Tuscaloosa and, and, you know, and you, you, you know, depending on what part of the state you're in, Southern part of the state, those people live closer to LSU than Mississippi state, mm-hmm. you know? And so those schools have done, you know, you see, a, you know, they've been having to play against those schools for so long. Whereas, you know, for us, unfortunately, what happened mid 90s when we were left out. Right. Um, I think you would have seen the same response from our fan base over time that you, that I saw at the last one. If we were still if we were in the Big 12, you know, 30 years ago, okay. 28 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't say that Mississippi State's fan base is more passionate than Houston's fan base. I would not say that. I would just say the awareness uh it's just been in their face for so long, so much longer. So do, are, you, are you enjoying the challenge? Yes, of- I am. I am. I, I am enjoying. We have great people here. I love like our donor base and fan base. They're itching for us to be successful. Um, you know, they're, they're, I, mean, I met so many people that are excited about the growth, of not just athletics, but the entire university. Uh, I think everybody, everybody knows that the opportunities are endless here. Um, and so now, you know, I think we have the right people that have seats around the table. And I think, the, you know, now, you know, the plan has been put in place. And now you got to execute. You know, you can have the plan all day. You can have all these, you know, sheets of paper of this is what it looks like. This is what we should do. This is what we got to do. But at the end of the day, we got to execute. 
Um, you know, and so that's I've enjoyed that piece of being challenged and had a lot of challenging conversation where people have, you know, kind of held my feet to the fire on. So what are you going to do? What's mm-hmm. what's next steps? And so that lets me know that people care because if they didn't ask those types of questions and they didn't put those types, of, you know, put you in those pr- the pressure cooker on a regular basis, you, you know, you don't know that they really care. What has been the response so far from uh, the announcement after after the announcement of the Cougs on the Road summer tour? People people are excited, especially, you know, people here like in the Houston area, they're they're always excited. But, you know, they have the opportunities like the head coaches radio shows. I mean, I don't know if you attended in any one of Coach Sampson's radio shows this year, but man, uh, they were at J Bar M on mm-hmm. uh, depending on. You know when when the games were during the week, but either on a Monday night or a Tuesday night, pretty regularly every week. And man, I mean the, the attendance at his radio show was phenomenal. Um, and people, in, 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 at first, it was you thought that well, you're gonna see the same people every week. There were new people every week, um, and it just kept growing and growing and growing. So I think the people locally have gotten opportunities to get out, and and there have been some meeting greets for Coach Fritz and people, but the people in like Dallas and San Antonio have not had the same opportunities. And those people are really excited to, to be able to take a photo or, you know, be able to ask a question. Um, they're really excited. So this response has been great. And we, we don't want this to be one of those one hit wonders. Uh, this is something that we want to start and, and it becomes a tradition for our athletics department. And it is free, but you want folks to register, correct? Yes, yes, it is free, uh, totally free. And, and the registration just for us to get a you know, feel of the size of, you know, the, the rooms already set, but just – you know, seating and bar highs and number of what, you know, that's, that, that's part. And then just to get people's information so that we can follow up of, you know, we can thank them properly and stay in touch. And so that's the point of kind of the registration. And how do you do that? I have it here. It's kind of long, but if it's a shorter one, go ahead and say it. <laughs> no, that's, that, that's the, yeah, that's the link there. Okay. So mm-hmm. giving.uh.edu forward slash U-H-A-A forward slash two two zero two four dash Cougs dash on dash the T H E. Yeah, and if someone room, there you go. And I'm gonna put my email address in the chat. And if somebody um uh, if someone wants to like they have trouble with the link or something, they can just send me an email and we'll make sure they get the right link. Okay. And let me let me see if I can do that real quick as we're talking here. But I'm glad. You're, so far in the eight months that I've known you, you've been straightforward with me. You have agreed to meet with me. I do it like this, see if this works. All right. I appreciate it. So let's see if we can do that. Show it. There we go right there. Anything else you want to touch on? Because the main thing was was really getting the word out about yeah. kids on the road summer tour no you know right now we just need people uh, as much as possible to renew their football season tickets uh their renewal deadline's coming up may 10th um and then we'll go through what we call our upgrade process after that uh and then we'll get out, get out on the we'll get out uh basketball renewals here's uh the end of may slash beginning of june but it's important you know we need people to to, to do more than they've ever had before you know, that's just a God honest truth. You know, when we think about where we are, revenue situation, budget situation, um, you know, that person that's been given, you know, four hundred and eighty dollars a year. You know, we need you to get five hundred. You know, that's you know, um, our student athletes and our coaches are doing everything that they can. And I'm, I'm, that's 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 me being honest. They're, they're working their tails off um, to make people proud, you know, alums proud, fans proud. Uh, of what the product that we're putting out, but we, we need people's help. So, you know, right now during renewal season, we need people to be open um, to kind of doing more than they've ever had before. You teased this earlier. So I'm going to try to pin you down just a little bit about a fifth date for the uh, summer tour, fifth, fifth stop for the summer tour. When is that going to take place? I'm not going to ask you to name the place, but when is it going to has the date been finalized for that? Yes, it's not been finalized, but it's going to be late summer. So it won't be it'd be, you know, somewhere around the start of, you know, right before the start of fall camp. All right. Alvin Franklin, thank you very much, as always. And reminder, if you want to email him, there it is right there. Send him an email and, and he is responsive. I, I've, I know that 
directly from Miss Wanda Polk because you you and her have exchanged emails on occasion, so that's good. And I appreciate you keeping in touch with her. So Alvin, thank you as always, my man. And I will see you around campus. Okay, sounds good. Thanks for all you do. Appreciate all right. you. Take care. Okay, ma'am. Bye-bye.